Alright guys, welcome back to God of War. The last time we met in God of War, we, uh, we, we defeated the Hydra. I mean, we began the game, obviously, and defeated the Hydra in one of the most uh, crazy tutorials for a video game, if I'm... I mean... I mean, that's actually one thing I really didn't go over with um, the last part because of how, you know, weird it, it, the last part is about, like... Um, with the cutscenes and stuff, because, you know, with how I'm doing, approaching cutscenes in this, it was a, it's a little hard to get into in-depth conversations, but now that we're, I, I think I'm sort of getting the groove of it, we're gonna, you know, we'll be able to do more discussion about this, but one thing I really love about the God of War series is how it does its tutorials, you know, I, I, admittedly, I do hate the fact that in later God of Wars, we're gonna be losing all of our upgrades, kind of like Metroid it does. God of War 2 is the worst. God of War 3 actually is the worst with it. Because you just start with nothing. You know, you you have the Blade of Olympus and the Athena's Blades all the way to max. But what the hell happened to all the other stuff in between God of War 2 and 3? Because literally God of War 3 takes off right when God of War 2 ended. God of War 2, you at least start with Poseidon's Rage at max level. But yeah. You know, the thing is... But, those tutorials do a really good job. Oh, I know what I'm doing. I'm going, I'm going back to those enemies I defeated. I missed um, last part. I'm really doing that. But God of War does a really good job in you know making the tutorial not feel like a tutorial. You know, you don't like you don't have someone saying to Kratos every two seconds, attack this, attack that. And that's something a lot of games have just sort of uh, games have just kind of lost lately. You know, because, like, an example of what I'm talking about is, like, you know, some games start off, you know, with a training simulator where the character you're playing as is training and they're having someone tell you exactly what to do. God of War, yes, does have pop-ups that tell you how to do it, but it's not like, you know, you're forced to do that until um, you can progress, you know. You can kind of figure out how combos work. Like, it doesn't tell you what how to do combos and stuff like that you kind of just guess that you can do that like you don't have someone breathing down your neck the whole time though i i do hate that the fact that the tutorial pop-ups happen like right when you do the action that they wanted you to do um but yeah but also it's just a matter of the scale of the tutorial you know, sometimes what you're doing in a tutorial can really change on how you feel about it. And, you know, what we did here with how very cinematic and how we're just killing a giant boss fight, that's a pretty good way of doing a tutorial. Um, I mean, and for, for God's sakes, you could die in the tutorial and nothing wrong with that. I mean, I probably, I think I died like three times to that balancing section back there um, over the um, at the beginning because of just stupidity, you know? Like, God of War prides itself on its difficulty, but the thing is, is that God of War, sorry about that, um, God of War is, it's, it's, it has a bit of a difficult, a bit of a difficulty, but it's not, like, crazy, you know? It's not, like, insane. You can still get past it with little to no problem, it's just a matter of persistence. I mean, then again, you could do that with any game, but God of War especially is really good with it. Slaughtered like animals, the victims lay before him, a reminder of his own past, a past he could never escape. His only solace was the sea, endlessly sailing from one harbor to the next in service to the gods of Olympus. All his hopes rested with them. For no matter how much wine he consumed or how many women he took to his bed, nothing on earth could rid him of the horrors that plagued his mind. Athena! 
Ten years, Athena. I have faithfully served the gods for ten years. When will you relieve me of these nightmares? We request one final task of you, Kratos. Your greatest challenge awaits in Athens, where even now my brother Ares lays siege as we speak. Athens is on the verge of destruction. It is the will of Ares, my great city fall. Zeus has forbidden the gods from waging war on each other. That is why it must be you, Kratos. Only a mortal trained by a god has a chance at defeating Ares. And if I am able to do this, to kill a god, then the visions, they will end? Complete this final task, and the past that consumes you will be forgiven. Have faith, Kratos. The gods do not forget those who come to their aid. Leaving the rotting carcass of the Hydra behind, Kratos set sail once more. His greatest challenge and freedom from his growing madness lay before him in the ancient city of Athens. Okay. And by the way, if you're wondering, yes, I do have to edit out all of the nudity in this game. And, um, so you may be seeing a black screen right now. Stay, Deal with it. <laughs> I'm too lazy to actually do editing. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do for editing. I know for a fact I do have to censor it because... Um, oh, I gotta edit this out too. You know, I just feel like this is gratuitous, honestly. Like, there's just no reason for this, but I think this is what... You know, I remember people going crazy at the fact that this game had sex mini games, or at least the one like OG God of War is known for its sex mini games. We can all say that, and I just they're I, I feel like they're pointless. God of War three is the worst with it. No, not not even God of War three. It's still pretty bad, but you know. Like, I don't... I, there's just no reason for it. You get red orbs for doing it. Which is nice, I guess, but it's like... Like, I only do it just for the sake of the red orbs. That's all it is. At least it did all the editing for me. <laughs> that's the that's the perk of of that. I That did the editing for me. They do the editing for me in all the other ones. Like, I think the only, like, OG God of War that I can immediately think of doesn't that doesn't have a sex mini game but does feature nudity is ascension that is the only one i can think of immediately off the top of my head because two does Ch chains of olympus does ghost of sparta does and um three obviously does and i'm glad that they did away with that sort of thing in god of war 4 and uh ragnarok I know it's not. I know the new one is not called. I know God of War 2018 isn't called God of War 4 by technicality, but I'm calling it God of War 4 because it is technically a continuation of. I interchange between calling it God of War 4 and uh, the and um, God of War 2018. Sometimes I say Dad of War, but Dad of War just sounds ridiculous after sometimes. Um, so yes, now we actually have our main objective for the game. Kill Ares. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's really all our main objective really is, is just kill Ares. And, um, as you saw, Kratos has a bit of a messed up past. He's done things, apparently. Um, what those things are, we will find out later. Unless you played this game before then you already know it and um this brings up a, kratos is it, it, okay i'm gonna spoil it because it doesn't really matter this game is like everyone already knows anyone who is at least remotely connected to the god of war series already knows kratos has passed and also this game came out in 2005 i'm gonna spoil it because i don't care so kratos um gave his life to Ares. um in pursuit of surviving a war or something like that. And in doing so, you know, that's where he got the Blades of Chaos that we're using. Ares gave it to him as a means to show the oath. 
um, one day when he was raiding a village under the name of Ares. Ares tricked him into killing his wife and daughter. So as a result, Kratos now holds resentment towards Ares. Um, now, Kratos' skin being pale white, that's actually the ashes of his wife and daughter. I know I'm going way too in-depth with this at the beginning of the game, but the game takes its sweet-ass time revealing this shit, so I don't care enough. And, you know, Kratos' backstory really brings up a question, and especially with, recent, with the recency of God of Ragnarok and what it did with Kratos' character and, you know, just what they've been doing with Kratos as a character... And this has been a debate for a long time for some people. Me, personally, I'm kind of in between on it. Well, actually, I'm not in between in it anymore after Ragnarok. But it was, is Kratos really redeemable? Like, can Kratos really be redeemed for what he's done? And... Uh, it's kind of a hard question. Because it also just depends on, like what your definition of redemption is. You know, if you're wanting Kratos to be forgiven for everything he's done, there's just no way. You know, what he's done in the past is just, you know, he, especially with what we're going to be doing in later games where we're killing gods every five seconds causing chaos in the world, I don't think you can be particularly forgiven for that. However, what Kratos does is... He does truly regret what he's done. You can see that in the later games, especially. But what I think redemption is for Kratos is w preventing that kind of thing from happening with other people. And I think Kratos did a fantastic job with that in the new series. You know, he goes on and saying that the path of vengeance is one that nobody wants to go on and stuff like that because he's using his personal experience from that. So in that case, I do think Kratos is a redeemable person. You know, I think Kratos using um, using his path as a means to show what, you know, as a means to protect other people from becoming like him is fine. <laughs> but, you know, all of Kratos' actions themselves, like, you know, Killing his wife and kid, you know, uh, his first wife and kid, um, you know, killing all the innocent people he's killed, and, you know, later on when we're going to be killing, you know, you know, all the gods and causing chaos around the world, or at least in Greece, that is really irredeemable. There's not really much you can do about that. Um, so, actually, let's talk about the actual what's on screen for a second. So, earlier I um, used my red orbs to unlock the level, um, the second level of the Blades of Chaos, and you see that little um, Spartan helmet on the bottom right corner? Um, it's not there now, but it was a minute ago. That is the Rage of the Gods um, meter. So... In order to get Rage of the Gods, you have to get attacked, like you have to get hit, um, you can get it by taking damage, giving out, giving, uh, giving damage, um, and stuff like that. But when your meter is full, if you press R3 and L3, or, you know, press the thumbsticks together, uh, or press the thumbsticks at the same time, you will enter Rage Mode. Okay. I have a question there. What the hell happened there? I didn't fail a QTE. I heard the chime, but it acted like I didn't do it. I think what happened was, since that's technically a different elevation, I think that canceled it out? I don't know. Because I've never had that happen to me before. But, um, Rage of the Gods mode is basically, you know, super mode. You will be a lot faster, You will have, your attacks will do more damage, and depending on what level you are with the Blades of Chaos, you'll get different perks. Like, when you get to level 5, you'll have unlimited, un unlimited magic um, until the state's over. Though I will admit, Rage of the Gods drains fast in this game. They do not want you in that state for very long.
Yeah. So I don't, I'm going to say this now. I don't know if I got every single like chest in the game. Someone can, pro you can probably tell me that on your own. Like, you know, just say, hey, you missed a chest here, here, here. Even though, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it won't matter. Um, in some instances, I, you know, so there will be some instances where I'm kind of running around like an idiot for a second. That's probably because I think there's a chest. And honestly, getting all the Gorgonize and Phoenix Feathers to upgrade your health and stuff like that is not that hard. If you just have like the most basic sense of curiosity, you should be able to get all of the items you need. You should be able to get all of the health and magic expansions. No problem. Um, except for one set, but I will talk about that when we get to it. Um, but I'll talk about that later when we get to it. Um, another thing that this game does a lot is all of the chests um, have certain orb types in them. Um, red chests have red orbs. Blue chests give you magic, which and then green orbs fill up um, health. And then gray gray chests with no like particular chest usually hold Gorgonizer Phoenix feathers or some other type of item, or they hold just more red orbs depending on if you have enough Gorgonizer Phoenix feathers. Just depends. Um, what was I saying? Um, but magic and health chests fill up your health and magic no matter how much you have left. So if you are like one pixel away from dying, the health chest will fill it up all the way. So you don't have to worry about the game just kind of screwing you in that regard. Um, now the red orbs, though, they give each every chest depending on how far you. It honestly just depends on how far you are in the game before they start giving you more and more red orbs. Like you'll notice, you'll know how many um, red orbs. You'll kind of guess how many red orbs you're getting from a chest based on the size of the orbs. You know, if the orbs are bigger, that means you're getting a lot. Um, and in this, I think this is like really the only game in the series where you don't have a constant reminder of how many red orbs you have besides the little meter with the level right there, like how it says two right there. That just means how many times, you know, I filled up the meter, but it doesn't give me an exact number. Um, if you want an exact number, just look in the pause. Just look in the upgrade screen, and it'll tell you exactly. All right, we're about to get our next upgrade. Aphrodite. Kratos, the gods are pleased with your progress, but your current skills will not be enough to defeat the minions of Ares. I offer you the power to freeze your enemies where they stand. But you must earn such a gift. Medusa, the queen of the Gorgons. Bring me her head, Kratos, and I will give you the ability to wield its power. So now we are working on getting our next major upgrade, the Medusa's Gaze. And in all honesty, I don't like you. I don't really use Medusa's Gaze um, that much because one, it's a beam that it, one, yes, it can freeze your enemies um, in place, and you can instantly kill them, which is nice and all. But you have to get them in. You have to get them in this beam, and it takes a second. So basically, you're standing there, completely vulnerable, while all the enemies are running around trying to kill you. So I don't really use it because of that. I do. I did start trying to use. I did start to use the Gorgon Flash a little bit, um, in later parts. Um, that did really help. But again, similar reasons. It took a couple shots to actually freeze them. For fuck's sake, dude. Block and parry. I don't think rage was going to really help you. <laughs> I, 
I know Kratos like gets like lightning um, of to simulate the Spartan armor, but it just looks like he has a giant mohawk. This is pretty easy. You're just so unfortunately you can't. You can actually farm experience here if you so choose. I didn't do that for this let's play because I didn't care enough. But what I did there was stupid. You have to destroy a bunch of, of the Minotaurs with Medusa's gaze, and that's all there is. You get fifteen. You get a guaranteed fifteen red orbs for um, crushing them, though, and I do. I do like that. But at the same time. Oh, he did it for me. And yes, before you ask, you can get um, turned into stone by the end by the, throughout this game. And if you do, you need to wiggle the analog stick to get out of it, and you need to do it fast because if you end up getting stoned um, and then get hit during that, you're dead. I'm not. I'm not editing that. I'm not editing for that. Um, if you do, you die instantly. Or if you are unlucky enough to be in midair while get, when getting turned to stone, you die instantly when you land. I've had that happen to me once or twice, and it was annoying. Not in this playthrough. It just happens. In, it happened to me in general. I think it happened in God of War Two most for both of those times. But if you're wondering if I'm going to do the origin games like God of War, Ascension, oh, sh sorry about that. I just heard my cat, you know, fighting my other cat. I'll, yeah, no, well, they stopped it. I was about to go over there and break it up myself. Probably a bad idea. Probably end up in the hospital. But yeah. Anyway, what was I saying? Um, if I'm going to play, like, God of War Ascension, Ghost of Sparta, and Chains of Olympus, I will, um, probably, I would probably do the main trilogy first, um, or I would just focus on the mainline games, though technically all of them are mainline, they are all canon, it's just that, <sighs> they're so small, they're such small games that it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. They, they just give you a little more elaboration on certain details of Kratos' past. You know, like, you find out Kratos had a brother. You find out that, um... You know, you find out that Kratos has actually been helping the gods for a long time. You find out how Kratos managed to break his oath to Ares and all that kind of stuff. Um... Excuse me. Like, you find out stuff about Kratos you should already know. Well, okay, brother thing's different, but Ascension is... Ascension, honestly, is just so forgettable to me. Just in all honesty. Like, I like that game, I do, but... Um, I remember not remembering much from it when I played it, my first, like, a while ago. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is the end of the part, because looking at the playhead and the fact that I'm at a save screen. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, okay, let's say, is everything okay past me? Um, but yeah, so that's the end of the part for today's God of War part, whatever we're on. I think part two, idiot. So the next time we meet in God of War 2, God of War 2, no, God of War 1. I wish I was playing God of War 2 right now. Next time we meet in God of War, we're going to be continuing on through Athens, uh, trying to get to Ares. Um, so yeah, see you guys next time and take care.